Alright, so we're back with part two. So, uh, before we actually got to go up to the second floor, we actually got a chance to check out the theater. And that theater is it's pretty massive. Yeah, no, it's big. I definitely think, uh, he said they bring a lot of teams down, like a whole teams from the from the different departments and put them in there to watch films and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's big and comfy. Very comfy. <laughs> if movie theater seats were that comfortable? I would go to that movie theater every day. I'd probably fall asleep in that movie theater. <laughs> I'd probably go in there just to, what movie? Give me any one. Any I one, I don't care. I'll take a nap. <laughs> Actually, give me the most boring one because that would put me to sleep the quickest. Um, so, we went to the theater. Uh, that's where, uh, you know, we got a chance to check that out. Um, and then we left, went upstairs. Uh, we got to check out the floor. That's where we couldn't take any of our cameras yeah. or anything like that. Uh, that's definitely... Uh, a segment where the NDA actually kicked in as far as, you know, as far as us taking pictures. And For sure. We're allowed to talk about it. Right. We, can uh, about we, it. Can't, we can't show you anything about it. Um, it was it was awesome. I've never been in that, in that situation. No. Like in any, I've never been in any game studio or anything. And um, So the way the office is set up is really cool. It's very open. Mm -hmm. And they took us into a couple of different meeting rooms that were all glass. And we could look down and down on the floor is literally the development team of Destiny and they're all just going to town on like four or five monitors a piece yeah. and um, it was cool. I think the coolest thing for me, I looked down and there was like a screen that was was obviously running some sort of lighting test. Mm -hmm. So I had the character model and he was like moving around, shining his flashlight and that was just cool to me to see like this, this one little part that like somebody is investing all their time into making sure that when you shine a flashlight on something it looks perfect. Right. And it was cool to see that kind of like input going on in every little station. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's funny because uh, even with like certain people's monitor, you can actually see them playing the game, testing the game, mm -hmm. you know, doing, doing different things like that. Uh, there was a particularly one area where we were downstairs, and when you looked up, there was a conference room, a big screen, there was like a ton of people in there, and they would look like they were running through a playthrough to, to check the game out, look for different bugs and things like that, but it was, it was crazy seeing that happen, and just like you, that was my first time yeah, that was my first time in a developing studio that I can remember. Mm -hmm. Well, it was the first time of one of this magnitude. At least. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, but what I liked is their lighting conditions. Like, it was extremely, not extremely dark, but it was it was a nice low tone yeah. mood. Uh, none of the ceiling lights were on. They had, like, little lamps that, are, that were around. I mean, there were so many monitors that will light up the room itself. Yeah, and it's dark anyway, because like he said, the windows are frosted, obviously. Right, um, that was one of the first things I noticed, Yeah, the windows were frosted. The windows were frosted, and they had big shades pulled down, and uh, so yeah, it was mostly like the, the light of monitors and little lamps here and there. It was really cool, like a really cool environment, and all the desks could move. Right. Uh, all of them were on wheels, all of them were height adjustable, mm -hmm. so you could go from working sitting to working standing. Right. I thought it was really cool. Where, which is, uh, I, I think that's pretty amazing because even where I work, it's a desk job. Mm -hmm. And we have these things where we can slide our, our keyboard and the monitor, not the desk, but the keyboard and monitor up and down if we want to stand up or not. Right. Because sitting, uh, looking at the amount of hours that they work and put into oh, a yeah. game, especially when it's time for like an E3 or stuff like that, you know, they're putting in like a crazy amount of hours. And I really wish that more people could see things like this yeah because sure. I think it would make them have more of an appreciation for these games being built and it would probably make them think twice about trading in games like the, the used game market like the used game market is awesome and again me I use Gamefly so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a critic of this too but when you go in there and you see how passionate and how much work they're putting into these games like people always sit around and are like oh well Bungie's a million dollar company they can blow up it's like these guys are like very passionate about this game. Very I mean, much. talking to these guys, you can just, it's just oozing out of their body, like how passionate they yeah, are. Yeah, I think the, the thing that was crazy to me is like, you think Bungie, you think huge company, and you think that they're gonna be like, kinda, that they're gonna act like you should love this game. Right. But the, the vibe that I got the whole time we were there was they really wanted to know if we liked it. They right. really wanted to know what we thought about different things. They were just, it was almost like, 
gushing over it in the sense of like we really hope this is something that you love because we're so in love with it right and uh that kind of that was cool it was not what i expected right. i kind of expected them to just know yeah our game's awesome right and they do their game is awesome and they do know it uh, and they're but very, very humble but they're humble about it to the sense of like we think it's awesome do you think right. it's awesome and right. I, I think that's a great attitude to have a, a very good attitude to have because that means you're open to criticism, where you're open to just yeah. hearing opinions about the game, what can we improve, what can we make better, because we, it's our baby, it's our game, so we obviously know what's awesome, right. but you have no ties to this, let us know yeah. what you see and what you think, so we can fix it and make it better. And there was a point in time where I gave them a standing ovation, and that's the part that we can't speak on. It's true. But there was a part where I gave them, I literally stood up and gave them a standing ovation because what I... They deserve it, yeah. Yeah. What they're doing, I'm, man, that's why I'm saying a lot more people... And, and, and when us going there gave me a, a ton more appreciation for this game and what it's doing and where it's going. For sure. And it's definitely going to set new trends and new boundaries for first-person shooters and even cooperative gameplay uh, because that's like their main focus from the ground up like that's what they had in mind yeah. so um, yeah I'll, I think I'll leave it at that yeah so Bungie awesome if Bungie if you happen to see this thank you for having us uh, oh I'm, I'm sending this yeah, to, uh, to Deej there you go so we had a great time Deej you're amazing and looking forward to the second date yeah I'm, I'm, really, I'm hey I'm trying to get to where the magic happens. Right. Okay? I've bumped the second date. I'm a whore. Nah. <laughs> get me, put a controller in my hand, okay? Third or fourth, <laughs> just move on. Uh, but no, that was uh, our trip to Bungie. Uh, yeah. After that, um, we went to a couple of parties. Yeah, yeah. Or we, actually, we went to we a went, party. We went to a party because uh, we were a little late into it. But uh, we had invites uh, because of the PlayStation Blogger right. program. Uh, we had invites to the PlayStation uh, Indie PAX party, right? And um, I had a blast. Like we got there, uh, it was really uh, kind of a tight area, lots of people. Um, it was cool because you didn't really know who was developers, who wasn't. <laughs> uh, you kind of didn't know who anyone was. We were just kind of we were all gamers, and yeah. um, it was cool. They had lots of TVs around, just like they do on the PAX floor. Um, a couple of different indie games running on PS3s. Uh, I played one in particular called Counter Spy, uh, which was really cool, side-scrolling, procedurally generated, um, kind of spy shooter thing. It was good. It was really good. I'm excited to see it. Uh, I think he said it's coming out holiday-ish. Yeah. Um, on the 3 and the Vita. Right. Uh, and I think touchscreen devices too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ty was. Yeah, we played, what was that one game? Um, Sports Friends? Yes, man. Sports Friends, I'm going to say it right now, that's the new like party game for me. Yeah. It's going to be Sports Friends. Yeah, without, without a shadow of a doubt. That yeah. was, because I, I had always, always knew about the game, and I was like, yeah. oh, okay, it seems cool. After playing that Outrageously game. Outrageously fun. By the way, I whooped him. He did. But. Uh, <laughs> Multiple times. Me and uh, Kyle, which is another guy uh, who's a part of the, the program. And uh, Jeremy, who's another guy on part of the program, so Jeremy was on his team, Kyle was on my team, and me and Kyle, we did it. And dominated. Um, and, and me and Kyle were on the sticks for a while. Uh, nobody actually kicked us off, we just got tired and retired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was fun, the joust and the, um, the other one. No, 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 what about the other sports friends game with the move control? Well, that's what I was about to go to. Okay. Okay, so, so joust, I think it's called joust, right? Yeah. It was probably the most ridiculous thing. <laughs> I've ever seen. In fact, uh, uh, DLB laughed at this, but like, uh, we're standing around in a circle, and Jeremy was into it, like super into it <laughs> for some reason. Game. Like before it had even booted it up, he was like, "We gotta play it. We gotta play Joust. It's gonna be awesome." And um, so, so they boot up Joust, and the move comes on. I see Jeremy's face lights up, and he like runs to it, and uh, he's explaining it, and I'm watching people play it, and we're gonna tell you what that looks like in a second. But uh, <laughs> Jeremy goes. Jeremy goes, hey, you guys want to play it? And I went, I'm good. <laughs> and TMP lost it. Because you would have had to see this game made people look like complete Yeah, no, you look like idiots. a fool. So, uh, 
but basically the way you play is everybody has a move controller. It looks like there's no freaking limit because there was like what five, six people with move controllers. Yeah, no, there was a lot. I, I didn't even count, but yeah, it was at least six. There may have been more. So you you hold. So nothing. This doesn't involve your TV. No, screen. you don't need the TV at all. It's just sports friends. It's just on, it's just a screensaver. Everybody's holding a move controller, and basically, essentially, what you have to do is try to shake their controller so much to where it turns red. When it turns red. Right. It goes off and you're out, and the basically the last one standing wins. Right, but yeah. Everybody's like walking around like ninjas, trying to hold their move back, but they're trying to swipe at somebody else's. So, yeah. and you have to be even careful because it and the move's super sensitive, uh, and so like basically you're holding your controller straight up and down, and you you got your own little colors, your light up colors, and uh, as as it moves, if it moves even a little bit, it'll start blinking, and then it'll start blinking faster and faster and faster until right. it blinks blinks red and you're out. And so what you have to do is like, so there's, okay, so I'll explain kind of how I got out the very first time. Um, so I'm playing, because they did convince me to play it. Um, <laughs> it didn't take too much. To and so I'm holding it and I'm like, I'm like okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab it by the light bulb and like just hold it like this. And that's gonna help me hold it steady. And it, that was working for a while. And so there's this girl playing, there's a bunch of us playing, and there, in the back corner was this, this little tiny nothing girl. <laughs> And so, like, I'm like scooting over towards her. I got my like hand down low. I'm gonna, my plan is to get close to her and pop her move controller out of her hand. And she backs into a corner. Like, she's super scared and timid. And so she backs into a corner, and I was like, oh, okay, she's not a threat. And so I go off to like, there's like three of us at this point, I think. And so I go off to get this really tall dude who's got his move. And I'm like, I'm pulling my controller back, and I'm sneaking up, and I'm sneaking up, and I'm just about to knock his out of his hand. And the little bitty girl comes out of nowhere, <laughs> and she girl. slaps it out of my hand. I just turned around. I was like, "What?" Because I totally, I, I'd forgotten about her because she had pulled herself into a corner. I was like, "Oh, she's not nothing to worry about." And then she snuck up. She was good. She played for a long time, and she won a lot. Yeah. But yeah, so that insanity. 